let us see how to read a JSON file now. So for that we need to upload that file. So in a DBFS we are going to upload in a new directory file store tables. I'll create a new directory called JSON and I'll upload a JSON file here. So I'm again using a Formula One dataset constructor dataset which is in the JSON file. Let me click on OK. So you got a JSON file. You got a path also and we are reading a very simple csv and json files for our practice but in real time we will be dealing with more complicated files okay so let me create a new data frame here new data frame uh, sorry new notebook called reading json file okay let me click on create I have copied the path from here. I have copied the path from you. So we have been familiar with reading a CSV file now. So let me tell you it is again simple like when the way we read a CSV file the similar way we can read a JSON file but let us look at the documentation here. So data frame reader dot JSON. Okay, we are reading a JSON file. So some points are important here when you are reading again the parameters are path and schema obviously path it is mandatory without path you cannot read the file schema is an optional you can specify the schema or you can leave it but there are few more extra options so i always prefer reading this documentation you will get a clear understanding let me zoom out now you can see you have a time zone and you can see the options here we will talk about this mode We'll talk about the column name of the corrupt record, date and time. If you see the multi line, there is false, and there are so many other options. The compression is also none, so there is no compression when you read a JSON file or when you are writing a JSON file. Okay, so I want you to just go through this documentation. Now, if you come here, oh, just a this is a csv file this is about the writer csv this is about the json yeah so you have still many options here when you are reading a json file you have the headers and you have a info scheme uh, info schema option is not available actually i'll tell you how and why it is not available let me come here uh, i'll write spark dot read dot I'll not specify any headers. I'll not specify any option schema also. I'll write JSON and I'll pass the path. Okay, I'll pass the path. Oh, actually this path is not correct. Let me copy this again. Copy and let me paste it here. Okay, yeah. So it is file store table JSON. The file name is constructor.json. Let me execute this and let me display that data frame df yeah you can see that beautiful i haven't specified the option as headers because when you look at the json documentation you do not have an option called headers so this json file automatically picks up the headers automatically picks up the headers now you might be thinking what about the data types so if i run print schema for csv you get all you for csv you get all strings you have to info the schema but when you are using print schema for json file automatically the data types are detected you can see long and for string 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 and string so what i am trying to say when you are reading a json file you do not use an option called headers and info schema both. Let me show you in CSV file we have used option headers and option info schema for getting a data type and for getting a data headers. But when you are reading a JSON file, no need to pass those two options because the data is simple here. I mean, there is no options in JSON for headers as well as for inferring the schema 
so now this is your final data frame you can do some changes here you can get a new timestamp like we have done for the reading a csv you can do transformations there okay now if i want to write this data frame i want to write this data frame in again a json file but actually it is not recommended when you are writing a big data file format definitely they use a delta table or they use a parquet file but just for a practice i'm showing you how you can write it into the json file so for writer json uh, writer api json let me show you the documentation again just me scroll down and here you have a data frame writer.json so when you click on this again there are modes the same modes what we have seen for csv and data frame writer.json and give a path and then you can give a mode but that is an option so let me write df the name of the data frame is df dot write dot you specify the format json and you give a path so where you want to store hey i want to store in the file store table in json i want to create a new directory called output output json okay uh, we have two files here actually one is in the file store in the tables in csv we have output in json also we'll create an output okay so let me write output and let me execute this yeah it has executed let me come here and just have a quick refresh you got an output folder in output folder these are logs and this is your final json file so if you look at the constructor.json and this json the file size remains same and what is the point of converting or why what is the point of uh, writing that again to a json so no one will do that no one will convert your csv to csv json to json but we write it into the parquet file because the file will be compressed so let me show you the documentation regarding the parquet file so we have already written into the json but many times we use a parquet or orc to save the data frame so to write it into the parquet again we write data frame dot write dot parquet you specify the path where you want to store that data the modes are exactly same we will talk about partition by later on when you look at the data source options of the parquet you can uh, like i want to talk about this so if you look at the compression it is snappy by default by default it is snappy what do you mean by snappy so your data will be like it will be compressed suppose if you are reading one gb of csv file and if you are using a parquet file it will be few mbs so that is why we use or uh, we convert to a parquet file so now we have this json file now let me show you how we can convert data frame dot write dot parquet and specify the path so let me write file store tables json in that let me write a new name or a new directory i'll say output parquet and let me execute this yeah so it is so simple with only changing the file format and changing the path you will be writing your data frame so simple you can see so let me show you json in the output oh let me check tables json it should be one more output parquet yeah now you have got i just refreshed it so this output is in the json format this output is in the parquet format now you got this as a snappy dot parquet you can see at the end or you can see a snappy dot parquet so what does it mean so it is compressed in the snappy compression and the file format is parquet so many times big data file formats are converted to parquet but nowadays we got a new format that is delta or table you can convert directly to the table that feature is brought by databricks lakehouse only 
so let me show you how you can convert that to a table so you can see here you got your data view here you got one database but there is no tables here so if i want to convert this json directly to the table i can con i can write that in a table in the database here i can store it here so for that the code is again simple data frame dot write dot you just need to say save as table let me show you the documentation if you go back uh, you can see here so just you have an option called save as table you need you give a name that is in the string that name is nothing but a table name then your mode are exactly the same format by default it is optional we will choose about that format later on once we go in deep about writing a table but for now just i'm showing you save as as table and give a name so this is constructor file constructor okay let me close this and execute yeah now it is saving that to a table your constructor table so what i trying to say your json file can be written to the json can be written to the parquet can be written to the table can be written to the csv orc any format you want so the code is very simple now if you go to data and now you can see the constructor file so if i just open it you can see a sample data from your table so once you get a table now you may ask like why table hey once you get a table you can write a sql queries on top of that by using a pyspark or spark sql so yeah this is your sample data this is the schema this is the details about that table the details so this is actually a delta table the delta is a feature of databricks lakehouse architecture we will talk about that maybe later on but now you can see the sample data now you may ask like why table once you get a table you can write a sql queries on top of that so write a sql person sql so your cell converts to a sql here and now you can write select star from your table name so what is your table name it is constructor copy it paste it so you can use a sql commands here let me copy it and print it like yeah let me execute this so you get a table now you can see you got a table the same way how we can see it so this is how you can write it into the table once you convert a table and then you can play around that table using a sql commands so when you save this as a table when you save this as a table now where the metadata of this table is saved metadata so i'm telling the feature of this data bricks actually so when you go to your dbfs dbfs here you have one file called users here you have an hive and inside the hive you have warehouse in that warehouse you can see you got a new folder called constructor so if you click on that constructor you got one parquet file and you got some logs so this is a table actually this is a table and this table is a delta table so we will talk about that delta table in detail later on but this is where your metadata is stored of that table thank you for watching guys thank you for watching this video if so you like it please subscribe keep learning guys thank you